He was a very quick study as soon as he showed up. Uh, his first IndyCar season was 97, won the then Indy Racing League Championship in 1998, doubled down by winning the Indy 500 in 1999, drove for Gallus, A.J. Foyt, Chip Ganassi, Bobby Rahal, and Team Rahal, as, as it was known back then. His last race, the 05 Indy 500. Today we catch up with Kenny Breck, our honor. Kenny, how are you? I'm good, Dave. Thanks. How are you doing? Well, 2020 has been crazy. How about you overseas? Yeah, it's been a very, very unusual year, this one, you know. But, uh, you know, we, we power through it, right? That's right. Good health and so, so on and so forth, my friend. This segment is called, Where Are They Now? And it begs the question, where are you now, Kenny? Well, right now I'm at, uh, in England, in, in the UK. So uh, I live here now since, uh, yeah, 10 years. And, uh, but I, you know, I'm never stationed in one place, but uh, this is my, my home anyway. But it's been 15 years since you've raced an Indy car. Do you miss it? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, that was a really uh, fantastic period in, in my life, you know, lots of, uh, you know, you meet lots of friends. I'm friends with a lot of people to this yeah. day, you know, I still stay in con close contact with with people. Um, but you know, when you look back at it, it's yeah, it was a fantastic uh, time in anyone's life. You know, to be able to go to all these places, to meet all these people, to drive these fast cars, to to have the opportunity to win also uh, some pretty big races and championships. And uh, yeah, I um, it's it's a very exciting part of of life. But you know, life goes on, and you get yeah. older, and you have to. You have to adapt to that and find new things to that are uh, as exciting to do. Well, you've kept busy in racing since retirement, uh, most recently helping the folks at McLaren develop their cars and, and broke the lap record for a street legal car in Nürburgring and a couple of years ago, I think it was 2017, later named their, their chief test driver. I'm, you're supposed to take it easy in retirement, Kenny. You can't do that, obviously. <laughs> well, you know, I think that some people just love driving, you know, and I, I have this, uh, my passion is, uh, you know, I don't really care too much about cars per se, but I really, I really love setting them up and, and, and building that driver, you know, uh, engagement and performance. And, um, you know, I, I work with McLaren now since 2015 and, uh, we put out some pretty awesome sports cars, you know, and, um, uh, Price winning in, in in everywhere around the globe, and um, uh, you know it, it's it's a fantastic uh, thing for me to 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 engage in because I, I really am passionate about developing cars and the, the technology now that you you know in, in that you can use uh, it's phenomenal uh, it's really a, yeah I, I love that. So your input is directly seen now in what McLaren is doing for their, uh, their street course, their, their uh, uh, street legal cars? Well, uh, well, my role is, uh, my role is chief test driver. So that means, uh, that means that I work with uh, all the engineering groups, the attribute uh, teams, you know, to, to, to decide what um, technology to use and to, to, to test it and, develop it and uh, sort of package this whole thing so that it's uh, the best driving experience it can be. And uh, of course, there's hundreds of people involved in this, but, yeah. uh, but somebody has got to uh, steer it from a subjective perspective. So um, that's what I try to try to do to help with. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. That's pretty cool. Hey, you've kept a close eye on a current driver in the NTT and car series, a fellow a uh, driver from Sweden, Marcus Ericsson, set to begin his second season with Chip Ganassi Racing next year. What has impressed you about Marcus? Well, I mean, he, he's got a lot of experience now. You know, he did a lot of years in Formula One and, uh, uh, you know, he's uh, done reasonably well on the ovals, uh, I think. And uh, we'll be interested to see now his, uh, his second season with Chip and... Um, and see if that, uh, you know, um, if, if, if he um, can use some of that experience to, to, to run a little bit further up front. Um, but, you know, it's great to see uh, Swedish drivers come into IndyCar racing because, uh, you know, obviously 
um, it, it was a long while before, you know, until now that we had anybody from Sweden there. And now, now uh, there's two, you know, Felix Rosenquist as well. And, uh, if, you know, he's done really, really well. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's great. Mastering the ovals, was that the most difficult part, you think, for someone that's used to doing road and street courses? I think the difficulty in IndyCar racing is that it's so many uh, disciplines. Yeah. You know, you have street course racing, you have uh, road tracks, you have uh, short ovals, you have uh, medium and super speedways. You know, it's a lot of different type of racing that uh, it spans across a, a, a wide uh, area. And it's quite difficult to be able to well, first off, drive efficiently everywhere, but also, uh, you know, to learn what you need from the car in different scenarios. Uh, yeah, so it's quite difficult. Plus the fact, of course, that the cars are really, really equal. I, of course, bigger teams have more resources to, 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 to develop the chassis, but you know, it, it's it, the, the base, base chassis and the base engine, they're really, really similar. So you're not gonna find heaps of time you, you might find a few tenth over others so it's really really competitive and that's what makes IndyCars great absolutely hey uh last thing I can tell by your background obviously you're still playing in bands or what I remember in 2007 when you and the band released your first album and a song entitled Legend of the Speedway it was all about your car owner AJ Foyt all of it celebrating AJ's 50 years at the Speedway uh, what did AJ mean to you? Oh, he's, uh, he meant a lot, you know, I won Indy for AJ and um, he became like, a, you know, father figure in racing because he, he just have this wealth of experience, you know, um, and back then it was less uh, driven by, uh, you know, computers compared to now. So it was, you know, you had to have that feel. Uh, that uh, the, the subjective feel of things and he he uh, he's really good at that and obviously knowing the speedway and i learned a lot from him and i i still keep you know in contact with him uh, to this day you know he's uh, he's a great guy you know really is really is and how's the band well you know i have a band in london now so we still record and uh, write songs and it's my hobby you know we uh, yeah it's great you know you, you gotta you, you know i never they, i've never worked a day in my whole life it's not fantastic hey you know that's the way to I do mean, it yeah i mean you know you play you drive cars you 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 know you you do your passions it's uh yeah it's fantastic hey it's good to be kenny breck yeah <laughs> In some senses, you know, yeah, yeah, in some senses it is. There you have it. Where are they now? 1999 Indy 500 champ, Kenny Breck. Uh, come back and see us when you can, Kenny, okay? We'll do, we'll do. You take care.